I'm so excited today. Today, inside of the video podcast studio, we're being joined by Judy Matt of Spirit of Springfield. Judy, thanks so much, and welcome to the studio. Oh, I love this studio. I've passed it many times. It's your window on the world here. You know, we feel like we're like the Springfield Today Show uh, being I here. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I know it's a really busy time for you with Bright Nights just opening up. I've got it before we start. Thanks for taking some time to come and visit with us. Oh, I'm just pleased that you invited me. Thank you. So for the, it might be hard to imagine that folks hadn't heard of Spirit of Springfield, but for those maybe who are watching from out of the area, what does Spirit of Springfield do? Well, basically, you know, we're a private nonprofit organization. And we produce events to encourage civic pride in the community, period. And we give people an opportunity to celebrate. For, you know, that's what we say. Give people an opportunity for celebration. Pe many people think we are the city. But as, of course, we are not the city. We're a private organization. And how long has Spirit of Springfield been in existence? This year, this will be... The 33rd or 34th year. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember as a teenager volunteering with the Spirit of Springfield over, I don't know if it was Bay State West back then, but we were raising money for the Springfield fireworks that you used to, oh, I'm sure you still yeah, put on. Yeah, yeah. The, um, Barbara Garvey did the fireworks before we got involved, and she used to go passing the hat. I'll never forget that, because if you had a rain out, you had to still pay okay. for the artists, <laughs> and she did have a rain out. I'll never forget. But then we became what they call the Mayor's Office of Community Affairs, MOCA. And Mocha took over the, uh, the fireworks. And actually, Barbara had been the head of Mocha, and then they gave me the job um, after she left. Oh, that's nice. It's, uh, since that uh, has happened, I know fireworks have been a, a big, big part of the Springfield yes. calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, just an outstanding show. And you bring in some pretty special talent just for that show. Yeah, well, you know, we, we do, but the big talent is uh, the Grucci. The Grucci family, they are s simply the best. And I wouldn't want to... Do fireworks without them on the bridge shooting them off. Wow, yeah, that mm -hmm. sounds great. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been a part of uh, a, a few different things. I know one of them, we're just passing here, uh, the 9-11 Memorial. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, you brought a book down to the studio, and we're going to get some footage of it. Um, tell us a little bit about the story that Spirit of Springfield has with the 9-11 Memorial here in Springfield, well, Mass. Uh, there was a firefighter by the name of Dennis Ledger, and um, right after 9-11, the following year, he encouraged us to work with him to do something to commemorate this or honor those who had passed. And from every year following that year, we did uh, some kind of a ceremony, actually. First of all, it was at the public safe safety complex. And um, so throughout the year, we kept trying to uh, get a piece of the, of the um, World Trade Center. And uh, we did an awful lot to try to secure that. And we were turned down on three occasions over a period of years, and we just kept going back at it. And then we finally got permission to get a piece, and it was the very last day they were giving anything out. Wow. So we were very lucky that the Charlie Armet Trucking Company, Will Armet, went down, and he uh, and his dog slept overnight, <laughs> and we got one of the last pieces. And that was the beginning of what was to come. We brought that piece back, and it was honored in the city, moment of silence with so many people here and then it was in storage at the fire department and um so then the fire commissioner at the time gary Casanelli, um worked with me and it was the spirit of springfield couldn't get a piece it would have to be a city department like the police or the fire and he was the one that gave us the police the permission signed the documents so they kept it um uh, in their uh, warehouse while we kept trying to raise money to erect a monument. But we would take it out every year and bring it over to the public safety complex. And pe when you brought that out, people had to touch it. It was, yeah. there was a draw to that piece. It was very moving. So anyway, that happened. And then we were, uh, Pat Sullivan, Dennis Ledger, Amy and I traveled constantly to find a home in the city. And they were doing Riverfront Park over. So Pat said, this is the place. I went to Frank Colacino. And I asked Frank if he would head up a committee to raise the funds to do this monument. Simultaneously, we were looking at different artisans to create it. And um, we went through several of them. Pat gives me a call one day. I know who's going to do it for us, Judy. And it was a group up in Florence. And they are the ones that produced the piece. And I'll never forget the day that a group of us went up to see their creation, their idea. And it was uh, spellbinding to see what they came up with. So it, um, that was the beginning. 
Frank took on the effort. We raised three hundred fifty thousand wow. dollars to create the monument, and then we had the dedication three years ago now. And it's a beautiful monument on yep. monument on mm-hmm. Riverfront Park, yep. and it, it was constructed really uh, with that I beam that was. That's what it is, right, Judy? It's yes. a, it's an original I beam from the mm-hmm. World Trade Center yep. uh, from nine eleven, and and you were showing me here in the book um, how the artist put this together as yep. the light shines past the I beam. It creates the double pillar image of the t- yep. of the trade centers. Yep. Yep, and uh, it's Salmon Studios up in Florence that came up with the creation, and they are engineers, they're artists, they're so creative, and um, so the day that they turned the light on, the uh, vertical beam, and they threw it up against the backdrop, you could see the Twin Towers. Unbelievable. It really was, and uh, today we have it down at Riverfront Park, and when dust comes and that goes on, it's just striking. I've got to get down there, and I'll maybe get a little footage of that yep. for our interview here. Yep. Um, you know, th- it's a bit of a solemn uh, conversation, but one that needs to be recognized. Yep. And I appreciate you uh, and the work that all of your team has done to be able to bring a monument like that into our community to allow all of us to have connection and healing uh, with that with that event. So I appreciate that. Well, a couple of weeks ago when we released the book for the first time, it's called Forever in Our Hearts. Um, we had the people that were really instrumental in doing this, the man who picked it up, the man who t- photographed it, Chris Marion, from day one after with uh, Dennis Ledger, and the people that really made it happen. I mean, I'm the one, I, we helped make it happen, but without them, this would never have happened. The kind of thing that you want the everyone to see it so that they do remember. And we had the ROTC from Springfield Central, and they played a nice role in the ceremony we had uh, when we released the book. And uh, their major was going to tell the the students to go wait in the back until the ceremony was finished. I said, please have them stay here, because not one of them was born. Okay, sure. And I thought it was important. And at the end of it, I gave them all a book, and they they said, oh, we want your autograph. I said, no, go over there to Amy Burke. She wrote it. (laughs) And so um, she she autographed all the books for them. But it was something for the kids. So people have to remember. Sure. If you don't do things like that, it's easy to forget. Sure. It is. People just go on to the next thing and the next thing. It, you know, today, life moves pretty fast, doesn't it? And we appreciate you spending the time and effort to allow us all to reflect mm-hmm. on what happened on 9-11 and to keep in the forefront of our mind. Mm-hmm. But something from uh, something a bit solemn to maybe something a little bit more celebratory, mm-hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about Bright Nights, probably the largest event that's uh, is it the largest event that Spirit of Springfield produces? Yes. yes. It's a, I mean, I think it brings joy to uh, children of all ages for many weeks during the holiday time. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Bright Nights. Well, uh, Bright Nights is celebrating its 29th year this year. Oh, my gosh. And to date, we've had uh, 7 million visitors come through. And um, the American Bus Association just ranked us as the best of the best holiday lighting show in america wow we haven't even sent that release out um get exclusive here at the uh, mass live building (laughs) really and uh so we're very proud of that but you know it's not about the accolades it's about bringing the joy to people and the memories to people yes and that's what pat sullivan wanted to do from the very beginning because he remembered going there as a kid at forest park and they had these cutouts and he always remembered what it felt like to him and so we have uh it's intergenerational now we did a book a couple of years ago, asked people to send in their memories, and um, people, this one man in particular, he said, you know, the year I was married, I came, and then uh, they came every year since, since the first year, and then two years later, they had their children, and they came every single year, and so now he's, he just comes every year, it's, it's, a, it's, it's part of his, um, you know, Part of what he does for the holidays is come to through, through bright nights. You've definitely created tradition. I know on our family, uh, our daughter's birthday is on December 20th. And oh. every year as a tradition, we go to Vietnamese food at uh, at the X and uh-huh. then we go to bright nights. Nice. And it is literally what she uh, she expects it now, Judy. So. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we got to do that. I love it. And it's fun. Now, the bright nights, if you haven't been, I mean, it's just an amazing experience. You drive your car throughout Forest Park. It's illuminated with beautiful holiday lights of all different, all different types from Dr. Seuss to animals and dinosaurs and you've actually produced some fabulous little storybooks every oh, yeah. year yeah. would you share a little bit about these books that we have on the table well there, there was a woman in northampton who um 
was a writer, and she would do was doing books for the school system. And I heard about her, and I went out to visit her. And I said, you know, I want to start like doing a little line of books when we started. And it is still modest, but we do something in the park every year. And uh, the first year was one of the Leaping Deer, which is my favorite display. I think it was and, this one right um, here. And then every year since we've done a different one. And it happens to be something that's in the park. And this year we have Pablo. He's the polar bear. And... Um, but it's, a, it's a really a children's book. And if you look in the back page, the child could sign it so it's truly theirs. And then we sell a little character to go with them. You don't have to buy. You can buy them all separately. But they're, um, they've been doing very, very well. And, and I was telling you about the illustrator we had. Um, we found out that he was from Ukraine several years ago when we went to send him his check. You know... You didn't know when you hired him. You didn't once we go pay him. You realize, wow, this this gentleman, this artist right. is from Ukraine. Well, what happens? You may not know this, but no bank would send the check. Huh. They, they could not send the check. This was before the war. Comes the war, we contacted him, and um, I had his portfolio sent to me, not knowing anything about him. And I said, oh, that's the one I like the best. And so we started to get to know him, and I asked him, would you still want to work with us? And of course. They need the money sure. than anything. So um, we're able to wire the money to him in a different way. And it's Max Stasek, and he is in Ukraine and in very, very, very harsh conditions. And if you were to see the work he does, you would wonder how he could do such beautiful work in such difficult dire. conditions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the joy of the holidays and bringing joy to others is yeah. part of what the holidays is. And I believe that's what you're doing with Bright Nights is bringing joy to others, Judy. We try. You know, I think it's magical. I think it's uh, someone called a treasured tradition. Yes. And that's what we use because I think that that's what it's become. And you were mentioning that uh, a good portion of the proceeds of the sales of the book are actually going back yeah. to these folks over in, in Ukraine. Um, the Little Frog... Little, excuse me, this little frog book, when we found out where he was from, we went and had this produced, and we had another thousand of them printed and um, by Tiger Press and East Long Meadow, Sure. And they gave me it half their price. <laughs> and um, and one literally one day we sold a thousand copies. Unbelievable. And the people that bought them bought a hundred to go to this daycare or a hundred to sure. daycare or whatever. And uh, so we send all the proceeds to him. And we will continue to sell all the proceeds, send all the proceeds to him. You know, bright nights, you can have fun driving around with your family. <laughs> you can go in to the gift shop, get buy some, uh, maybe purchase a memory for your child. And then yet you're going to be helping folks and children overseas. So oh, yeah. really nice. You know, Judy, I really can't. I've, I've learned quite a bit, actually. I thought I knew a lot about Spirit <laughs> of Springfield being here today. Yeah. You know, one last question that I wanted to ask you before we let you go. I know you're busy. You've got people pulling yeah. you out of here. Um, why does doing business at One Financial Plaza, or rather the Mass Live building, work for Spirit of Springfield? Well, when we were looking for a home, we came to this facility right in the heart of the city, um, and we fell in love with it. We thought it was actually too good for us because it was so, you know, sophisticated, first-class office building. And I said, you know, how are people going to feel if they see me, a nonprofit sure. in a building like this. Very, sure. really, that was a real concern. And because here I am raising money and I'm spending it on, on a rental building like this. Well, uh, the people here gave us such a good rate that was very affordable. And not only that, they have simply the best management team between Tony, who's a director of security here. The place wouldn't be this place without Anthony. And, and then Mary um, Claire, yes. who's the building manager, uh, she's second to none. She is absolutely amazing. And I tell them that all the time. If you have any issue, if I need to be moving something, they send someone up to help. You know, it's just like it's a team. It's a family here. And um, I'll do whatever I can to help them and protect this, in this institution wow. because they do a great, great job. And... During some difficult times, I came here all during COVID every single day. There was a handful of people in the building, but I felt good coming here, and we were here every single day. And they've just maintained the excellence that they have since day one, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. 
Wow, Judy, that's a pretty nice attestment to the property. Can't really say more than that. I mean, nope. I, uh, I I can't agree with you more. Tony's great to see you every day. And I do like having, I like having Palazzo right here. I know I probably drink more coffee in the afternoon than, <laughs> and eat more treats than I should, but I no, like that. I could, I could say more and more, <laughs> but the management of this building yeah. between Anthony and um, everything is just so solid. You know, you know you're comfortable. I could come here 24 hours a day. Yes. And I do come often a lot of later times bringing things in and out but uh, between them and uh, they're just so responsive to anything that you need and it's all first class as I said it's first class building first class people running it and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else well I know that I am happy to be your neighbor here in the yep. building and it really is a first class place just like spirit of Springfield Judy and of course yourself and your whole team first class all the way yep. we really appreciate your time thanks so much for coming and talking with us today thank you Thank you.